I just don't understand why I have a low chair. Why do I have a low? We try to bring you quality content to the table, okay? But when y'all make fun of my Burks, my Burks and socks, okay? The socks and sandals look used to be in, okay? And then it wasn't, but now it kind of is, just not this format. Maybe with slides and not actual sandals, but things do come in and out of style over time. And seeing all those bell-bottom jeans with the rings makes me think that I'm about to watch like another Moon Shoes commercial, okay? Now, either way, just like frosted tips are coming back, sweater vests have thankfully remained off the radar. But while everyone's dressing up as a 1995 Britney Spears, I'm, on, I'm over here wondering why like my favorite turtle neck trend hasn't made it back and why out of everything coming back into the fray in the automotive industry that like tuner car market thing just really isn't anywhere to be seen i'm alex alex fi on instagram and in today's episode of what happened we're gonna be talking about just where just when and just why did the tuner market just seem to control alt delete out of this world If you're new to this channel, hello. Don't forget to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com. If you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, or wheel and tire packages, ship to your door in seven days or less, that's us. Plus we mount balance and ship them for free, which is like savings of $275 because we do it ourselves, okay? You may not be able to get car parts from Japan without a nine month delay, but you can at least get some wheels and tires so that you can at least ball out a little bit while you wait for the rest of your junk to get over here. And if you'd like a topic covered in the next episode, drop it in the comment section below so that we can read them, react to them, maybe laugh at your idea or laugh with you at the idea, then do it. To the guy wanting us to talk about the W8, keep it up. We're gonna need a little bit more effort. You might be thinking, Mr. Family Man, or wait, Family was the one to blow up the tuner scene and the cars associated with them. But the Fast and the Furious kind of propelled the tuner car market into mainstream media. But those tuner cars had a platform long before Corona landed that major sponsorship deal and the whole universal world that we now know and love as flying cars. Now, in the late 70s, the EPA and the oil crisis were running rampant. Countless regulatory changes, catalytic converters up the wazoo, and an increasing worldwide introduction of different vehicle marks like Honda, Toyota, and Nissan in the United States we're beginning to fill the gap between what consumers now wanted from a car and what the domestic market was able to provide, right? A little gap that was closing in. You had cars like Yoshihiko Mitsuyo's Datsun 240Z that was showing the world that overpriced air-cooled 911s wasn't the only import you could buy to have a good time. The Volkswagen Golf introduced something that was like conventionally fun with a decent gas mileage and a low price tag of 3,300 to boot, which was a Euro just budget-friendly car. And I mean, even the pre-facelift SJ or S some Honda Accord started growing a following in the United States as just a fun, reliable, sporty little car with decent gas mileage. And I know this sounds nuts, but the US market wasn't inherently educated about these types of subcompact, high efficiency, short wheel based cars. And the ones that they did have sucked terrible ass. And while the automotive enthusiasts continued to deal with the heartaches of their favorite domestic cars, going from the beautiful late 60s Ford Mustang S design to the 1974 Ford Mustang Ghia. Look at it, it's bloated and gross. No one wanted that. Sean, stop it. People immediately despise the design changes from the Buick Riviera from the dawn of the 70s, and the list goes on and on because they were just not good to look at. Domestic manufacturers are trying their best to make subcompact cars to compete with the worldwide market, and what they managed to make were this. An AMC Pacer. That's it. That's all I got. Enthusiasts began slowly making their way into Datsuns, into Mazdas, into Hondas, into Toyotas, and the market loved it. Back then, the Japanese and German cars began dominating the interest in the United States market when it came to cars. And in 1978, sales of American-made vehicles peaked at 12.87 million units. Four years later, it was only 6.95, as imports began to increase their market share from 17% to almost 28%. By 1980, Japan had become world's largest leader auto producer and only gave it back for one brief period of time from then to now. Pair that evolution with the fact that people love building things to the point of unreliability and you have the automotive tuner enthusiasts of the world. And that world was great. They went from the muscly cars to the tuner cars. And as we entered into the 80s and 90s, the tuner market continued to thrive with the legends that most of us know. You know, the RX-7, the Skyline, the Miata, the NSX, the 3000 GT, the 300ZX, and more. And along with great cars came even great 
greater media and events. You had crazy pop-up memes all over Sorrento Valley, Whittier, Minneapolis, Houston, and more. Then coverage companies like Turbo Magazine, Option, and more began covering the shenanigans of what our parents were doing with their 400 horsepower tuner cars, which was nuts back then, okay? Magazines then solidified what the tuner market was with tuner-specific content that featured hundreds of vendors that sold everything you needed to make your Dodge Neon fast and unique. Back then, magazine issues initially had about 40 pages of content per issue, but it quickly began to spiral in the 90s to over 160 pages over the course of a single decade. And if you remember Sport Compact Car, you're a king or queen. Just saying, you have my heart, let's link up. Event organizers began popping up as well, like Hot Import Nights, Battle of the Imports, Import Show Off, IAS, and it was a banging good time. The tuner market was thriving with good media, good builds, and good coverage. And the tuner community had everything going for it. But then something like weird happened, and gone were the days of putting MR2 side vents and super tail lights on your Integra. And no longer could you brag about 16 inch wheels and your monster tack that you bought. Mm, don't do that. People began transitioning away from true tuner cars and began exploring, well, different stuff. So what happened to the tuner car market? What happened to that whole community? Where did they go? Why did it all disappear? And what was replaced by the early 2000s of the bubbly Porsches? And nowadays about four potential platforms that do the same thing as what we knew the 90s for. Well, first off, tuner cars still exist-ish. They're just kind of in a different format. But in the early 2000s, some big impacts hurt the tuner market as a whole. One such thing was that transition from print to digital and the income the industry got from more traditional marketing means. What I mean by that is like print, right? And magazines had tons of advertisers that would support them. That support fueled event information that would spread and kind of sort of push the word out. Like lighting the pillars of Gondor, even though I've only watched that movie once, okay? But that diminished as companies went digital and the support for that traditional market began to wane. The value of magazines and the tuner culture value also diminished because the internet was allowing people to inherently blow up without any sort of paid magazine advertising print. And finally, the introduction of different automotive events, the biggest one was drifting in the early 2000s and it started to absolutely demolish car show attendance for quite a while and the tuner enthusiasts with it. Remember, a lot of this was happening all at the same time in the early 2000s. And by the time people started to recognize what was happening in the tuner market or specifically what the tuner market was initially known for, which was shows, parts, magazine, VHSs, it was already too late. Blockbuster. Digital sites, inexperienced event hosters, and the explosion of product competition from Japan lifting a lot of their export rules in the early 2000s and people growing into different markets really slammed what was the original scope of what we knew the tuner market for. And probably why when you watch the original Fast and the Furious, it feels so dated. And if it wasn't for the people within the tuner market hurting themselves with buying cheap parts, ruining shows, or choosing to upload a photo of their car to MySpace versus Option, it was the fact that quite a bunch of people just grew up in their vehicle interest. Maybe their first car was a Honda Civic, but 10 years later, they were buying an M3. Maybe when they were young, they bought a 3000 GT at 17, and now they have an AMG. The tuner market and the people that fueled it evolved out of the market they were born in, and when that happens, a lot of times those inherent initial interests die, and then you would just get nostalgic, okay? And that's why you see a lot of people idolize the 80s and 90s of the Japanese car modification, because of the idea of what it stood for was awesome. Individuality, modification, having having fun and not really giving a if something happens to your car. You can see it all over the internet right now. But with the tuner market in the States in the 80s and 90s, it didn't really embody that inherent feeling. It was about showcasing a car, making it different, caring about what happened to it, and not throwing it off a cliff and smiling while you're sitting in the ditch. It was a bit more conservative. You can either post a Dodge Neon with Lambo doors and a body kit on your TikTok, or you can choose a suicide song, suicide boy song with like an FC sliding into the ditch with some crummy VHS edit. And we both know what people will like more, all right? because that's just the way the world works. People are nostalgic for the danger. What is excited to me about the tuner market and some cars is that they are coming back. And you can see that sort of tuner market support in the BRZ and FRS. You can see it in the modifications behind the 370Z, the love for the Miata, and the parts that would typically be deemed ugly but are still getting installed in today's day and age because people enjoy doing things to their car. Not just aiming to be the next Vaughn Gittin Jr. and the next Chelsea Nofa, all right, but just trying to have fun in the industry. Just try to buy some name brand parts. Have have fun, build it for you, and when you end up buying wheel tires and suspension, there's the plug! 
Be sure to check us out over at fitmanindustries.com, but let us know what you think about the tuner market and if you think it ever really left or died. Do you think it's gonna come back stronger with all the introduction of the new cars like the Supra, like the Z, like the Integra, and like everything in between? Or do you think electric vehicles are really coming around to stay? I still think with electric vehicles being $150,000, I think it's got a little bit. Let us know. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. We will see you later. Peace.